Welcome to String Theory. Every Wednesday night, 7 p.m., the live YouTube show where you ask the questions and we give the answers concerning all things stringed. Tonight is a super special occasion. We are here live with one of my oldest friends in this business, Mr. Glenn Gotell, here at G&G &G Music in Antigonish, Nova Scotia. The world's number one Boucher dealer, the North America's number one Lakewood dealer, one of the best Martin dealers in anywhere you're going to find in the country, and a uh, hell of a guy to boot. And uh, we started the show tonight with a Boucher, the SG-21. It's, it's mahogany back and sides with that beautiful Adirondack top, OM body, uh, Studio Goose bracing, and it's a pure joy to play this instrument. An incredible piece of work. And uh, but what's the retail about on this one, Glenn? Uh, that one sells for around forty-one with pickup. 30, yep. Thirty-six, thirty-seven. With yep. Yeah. So this this has a K and K pickup in it. The all of them, yeah. About uh, but about four thousand dollars after tax with case and all that stuff. And she's a monster. Monster guitar, but we got lots of exciting things tonight to show you. So that was the whoops, we lost the stand. That was the first one. Um, so we're going to go to the questions, and there's lots of them popping up now. So the first one we had was uh, <laughs> the first one we had was from Caper Away. Hi, Caper Away. Uh, you're starting, uh, JP, I'm slowly building a home recording studio. I just wonder what you think of Apple's GarageBand. Do you have any recommendation for recording software? Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, GarageBand is not really technically a, a recording software. It's a, it's very useful. It has its uses. It's, it's a, how do you explain it? It's a huge, you can use it to record. There's no question about that. But the, the editing capabilities and mixing capabilities of, of it are not professional level or even close. But they do have a huge catalog of incredible samples of instruments, everything from guitars to horns to drum kits to whatever. You can literally build bands on, on GarageBand without ever, without ever playing an actual instrument. All the loops and figures are already there. You can just drop them into the tracks and they play. So the, the thing, the, the industry standard, one of them, there's more than one now, but the industry standard right now is Pro Tools. So I would, uh, if I was you, I would, uh, there's varying levels of Pro Tools. You can get even a Pro Tools Lite that you download off the internet. And you'll have to buy a, an in and out, an I.O. box, a, a box that changes analog to digital, and that's all you need. And you can re you record right into your computer, and the mixing and editing and effects potential of Pro Tools is so powerful. Well, most albums today are made with Pro Tools. That's the industry standard for most studios. Um, there's other ones that are very expensive. There's a, another good example of an Apple-based software is Logic, which is very much like Pro Tools and is just as powerful, except I, as a Pro Tools user myself, I have a problem switching over the learning curve, right? There's a, there's a difference in how Logic works mechanically. So that's the only thing that keeps me from using Logic. But as for its quality, it's super high quality. Pro Tools is much more intuitive, I, th I think. But it, it, you're listening to a Pro Tools user. So I would ask around uh, different people. And, and, and to be truthful with you, you should pick the software of the guy that you know you can call in the middle of the night and ask questions. Because that's how I did it. I learned everything I know from Jamie Folds at Sound Park Studios in Sydney. The guy who recorded and engineered Another Morning and uh, many other recordings for me and many sessions I've worked with. The guy is a genius. And because he was my good friend, you know, and his mother, uh, Joella, helped found Celtic Colors and helped and discovered me and gave me my start in the business. And so... That whole family was close to me, so Jamie became my guru. Well, get a guru. 
you need someone who can answer questions when you get stuck, and uh, that's the way to do it. So it's, it's definitely worth the time and trouble to, to get a decent software-based recording system to record with, and uh, there's just no way around that. And those, those are the two I recommend, Pro Tools, Logic. They actually have the editing capability where you can actually like take a single note and pick it out and move it somewhere else or, or change pitch or change. But the editing is so powerful that you can do miracles with it, right? So there you go. I hope you start your studio at home. Um, so we got, uh, hi, Brad. Brad. Brad's back with us from Concarden. Three card money's back in. New Jersey's in the house. Brother Joe's in the house. Michael O'Coin from St. Lazar. Uh, there was a message retracted. Who the hell that was? <laughs> hell with you. If you don't want to talk to me. Tommy Roach, Brantford, Ontario's here. Uh, so, oh, there he is. There he's back in there. Hello, Glenn. Oh. <laughs> 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 it's actually Glenn talking to me. I uh, should have known. GDS. Okay, right on. That is so funny. Okay, uh, Michael Easter. Hey, Michael. Back again. Hi from PEI. Excited to see the inside of G. Well, believe me, we're going to show you the whole shop. You've only seen a small part of it. So let's go to another guitar. Um, uh, you have how many? Seven, six, seven, Boucher? Uh, I just There's a question yeah. about Studio Goose versus... Uh... Okay, we'll get into that. You can probably compare them while you're showing the guitars. Uh, let me find a bluegrass goose. Here's one right here. Now this is a, their standard bluegrass goose. This is a BG-52 uh, bluegrass goose. Rosewood, beautiful rosewood. Mahogany neck, bound in maple. Adirondack top. 4A. Uh, just in case you didn't know this, Robin has one of the largest supplies of Adirondack in the world. Like, there, many companies actually buy their tops from him. Now, the difference between uh, bluegrass goose and a studio goose is very simple. It's all in the bracing. A studio goose is braced to deliver a more... Um, uh, uh, maybe perhaps it's hard to describe because it, all these guitars sound so good it's hard to tell what the difference is sometimes but the Studio Goose is designed to give a, a more controlled response especially through the bass end you'll have less mud more penetration Studio Goose as in it's designed really well designed to sit in front of a microphone and play the Bluegrass Goose Goose is designed, is braced inside to deliver a stronger bottom end and a, a flatter response in the top end with the same penetration. So you heard the OM that I was playing earlier. So this is the dreadnought uh, braced as a bluegrass instrument. Somebody's been at this one already in drop D. You just hear the bottom, I can't even, I have to yell over it. And you hear how that, when you hit that note, it swells, then it goes down, then it swells again. That's all the bracing. This is a banjo killer. This guitar is loud, powerful, punchy. The bottom end is humongous in it. But with, with no mud. It doesn't have, none of these guitars are muddy. That's where his recipe really starts to shine. It's when you hear how loud they are, but there's no confusion in the notes coming out of the guitar. your ears is that loud and uh, that's the bracing so that's the difference between the bluegrass goose which has I'd say about 10% more overall power than than the, but here's the scary part this is a dreadnought body I was playing an OM body when we started and it's just as loud 
It just has a different type of volume because of the brazing, right? So, like, they're just, they're so impressive. There's, I, there's really, I don't even know what to say half the time when I pick one of these things up, because they're terrifying what they can, what they can do. And, uh, and these are guitars are right out of the case. This guitar has never been played. It still has the pickguard plastic on it. And it sounds like a guitar that's been around for 25 years already. So, so there's your Bluegrass Goose, your BG-52. This one's equipped with a fish, which I'm not a fan of. And Robin knows this, Robin. But a lot of people want that. They, they want the Fishman because it's, they want the volume control inside the sound hole which for me doesn't matter because I use an amplifier so I understand those players that uh, that don't or can't use an amplifier having this system so they have control of tone and volume right there inside the hole I don't need that I, I, I just play through my amplifier and have all my controls on the amp so yep and one thing you can always count on is these pickups are installed to perfection Julian who does all the installs that Boucher. Uh, it's off the internet. We're off the internet. We get kicked off the internet. Oh, we're back. Maybe. Are we back? Can you see us, boys? Yeah, here we go. Jim says we're back on. Okay, good. Yeah, that was weird. Okay, so we're back. Uh, Michael, Michael, it's okay now. <laughs> okay. Good lord, the questions. Um, okay. Okay, here's a good one. Uh, so, three card Monty wants to know do, do I like cedar top guitars? Uh, I actually love cedar top guitars. They're, they're, they're not as hardy as a, as a spruce top, but they're softer and uh, therefore more prone to, uh, you know, warping and bending and cracking and stuff like that. But the tone of them is beautiful, fat, warm, with no, with not very much, like, treble, ugly treble in it. I've had a lot of cedar top guitars, and it's a beautiful wood. Um, but like I say, it's an instrument that you'll find may over time show the effects of time, temperature, and humidity w way more than a spruce top guitar. So yes, cedar all the way. Um, SG versus the, yes, yeah, so okay, so Mike, I just answered that question, so that's okay. That was a question, there's a question on here about the uh, studio in Bluegrass Goose, I did that. And uh, Three Card Money wants to know about seagulls. Seagulls are a great economy guitar. Uh, I'm not a, not a fan of them. I wouldn't play one, but because they're not set up so good, and uh, they they don't they don't uh, yeah enough said. It's a, you get what you pay for with the seagull. Uh, they're okay. They're great to, for a starter guitar, I would think. And uh, let's see here, uh, Ableton Ableton Live. That's Ableton's. A, that's another uh, Michael O'Coin has, has mentioned Ableton. Uh, that's another recording platform you need to check out if you're going to do Pro Tools or Logic. So that's, that's the deal. But this is getting interesting for me because all the people that are talking to me on here are starting to help me answer questions. Uh, let's see. Linking learning six and courses. Uh. <laughs> uh, so Cam McMaster says, I really hear you mention the word Gibson other than their hiccup in the last few years, which seems to be corrected. What is your overall opinion of them? Unfortunately, my overall opinion of Gibson is much the same as it is of Martin. They're overpriced for what they are. And they they just charge too much money for what they are because the hiccup with Gibson that you're mentioning, which is rather embarrassing, they had a guy working apparently in the factory that was putting their bridges on backwards for a year and nobody caught him. They didn't notice that this guy was putting bridges on backwards. For a whole year, and not only that, the guy was the guy who was gluing these bridges was they they were getting finish on the spot where the bridge was going, which means glue won't stick to it. And they were sending out hundreds of guitars like that. So you'd go and pay four thousand dollars for a Gibson, 
and take it home, and the bridge would fly off in the first week. It's not acceptable, guys. I'm sorry. I, I love the name. Like I, I, some of my heroes played Gibsons. Chet Atkins played an electric Gibson in the end of his life. But you can't do that. It's not allowed. When you're charging $5,000 for a guitar, it has to stay together. And it has to compete with other makers. I don't care who they are. So a lot of the big name guitars just don't compete. They, they're they good. We're out again. We're out again. Keep getting kicked off the Wi-Fi. That's horrible. And we're back. And we're back. Rural Wi-Fi, yay. <laughs> rural, rural, <laughs> yeah, yippee for rural Wi-Fi. <laughs> uh, if we, is data an option? I don't know if I can change okay. mid. We'll, we'll, I don't we'll know what going. that would do. We're having Wi-Fi problems because we're in the middle of nowhere. But that's the charm of the shop. Okay, <laughs> so uh, so there's there's my Gibson op opinion. Uh, <laughs> three card money says he. All I can say is I traded two Martins for two Gibson, and I'll never look back. You probably got good Gibsons if, you, if they were older. Uh, it's a good possibility. Still in one piece. What's that? And they're still in one piece. Yes, exactly. Uh, I'll see now. Uh, greetings from Wilson, New York. Thank you very much. Glenn, Jim Hammond says Glenn's tricky. <laughs> Glenn, Glenn's a great guy. If you ever, we're going to take a look, a closer look at the studio, the uh, shop here before we leave, and go. This is a great spot to find guitars. Believe me. Uh, Fantasy says hello. Nice collection. That's great. Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, here's a, here's a, here's a good question, and I want to answer it. And I hope I don't offend anyone. But uh, Michael O'Coin asked, asked me, are the older Boucher's built by Claude as good as Robin's? <laughs> They're not. Uh, and it's sort of, it's sort of just the, what, the way it is. The reason they're not, there's, there's nothing wrong with what Claude built. The reason that Robin's guitars are so far superior to the old Boucher's is that Robin perfected his recipe. And he did it over quite a span of time, about eight years, that he, he was building guitars and building guitars. And as the guitars, as this recipe formed in his head he's, he's a brilliant luthier this man and he he kept pushing the envelope pushing the envelope uh experimenting with everything and and he his guitars just kept getting better and better and better and better and in the last five years when i first started playing boucher's they were blowing my mind then now five years later they're they blow me away even worse because his not only did he surpass Claude, he surpassed him. He surpasses himself every year. His guitars just keep getting better. I don't know how that's even possible, but it is true. It's it's really the only example I've ever seen of that in the building world. Honestly, like I've because most guitars that you know that we love, right? But me and Glenn, we started working out together with on Lakewood, and Lakewood's a German company. They're fantastic guitars, and they are the same today as they were 15 years ago. They're still awesome. Nothing's changed. They didn't change the recipe. They stuck with what was they were doing, and you buy one today, and it sounds just as good as something you bought 20 years ago. Matter of fact, there's one sitting in here that will show you. Robin has somehow evolved, keeps evolving, and that's the thing that keeps me stitch to him so close because he just never stops inventing and he has and that means he has a love for the instrument and that is also rare with builders builders can can just uh you know get a great design and sort of rest on their laurels and sort of detach themselves from the love of the building and the art and just see the guitars go out the door and collect the money and that's the that's the end product right but some builders, like Robin, they they never go there. They stay involved in the process from the more, the day the hour they get up to the night the hour at night to go to bed. Their hand is in it all the time, and they do it because they love it. It's like, what can I invent next? How can I make this better? I want to see what this player thinks of this design, and on and on it goes, right? And that's those, these are the kind of guys. And Robin's not the only one, but the, like like. Callings is a great example of a company that they are continually pushing 
the boundaries, right? But they're super expensive, and, and possibly they should be for the amount of work they put into the instruments. But that's questionable. You know, the American guitars seem to be really, really expensive. And uh, you compare them against other builders around the world, and they always come out as the most expensive instruments. And I'm not quite sure if that's okay. I don't know. It's hard to say. But some people will always have $10,000 to spend on a guitar, and they'll buy whatever they want to use. they get the buying power to do it, right? Doesn't mean they should spend the ten grand. They could, they could possibly get something better for seven or five. It depends on where you look, right? So there's my Claude, and I'm sorry, Robin Maestro. I, I you know it's, 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 uh, but I had to say it. It's true. I'm I, it's a touchy sub subject, but uh, uh, how do you know? Oh, a lot. Who did this? Cam. Cam. Thank you, sir. Is, this, is, that, is that a super chat? Yeah. Oh, Cam's got a super chat up. Sweet. Thank you, Cam. Um, that's really cool. Uh, let's see. Back of Howdy. Good Lord. Uh, how do you know what your guitars are made from? That's an interesting question. Well, you know what? That's actually a cool kind of a question. Um, some, some, if some people, um, you know might not understand what their guitar is built out of, right? Uh, and, that, and that's not that's not necessarily a rare thing for people not to be unsure, right? If you're not a total guitar head like me. But I'll give you an example of how you know what wood is wood. What? So if we look at this guitar over here, <coughs> this blue, this uh, Studio Goose here, SG42, this guitar is made out of mahogany, and the reason I know that is because it's this, it's this light amber color with very tight, darkly flecked grain, little tiny flecks all through it, all going in the same direction. And it's basically the color, but the, but the fleckage of, of the wood looks like little tiny pencil marks all through it. The sides are the same. The side, this is all mahogany. So in other words, there's, there's the heavier grain you see here. The big dark streak there, but all through it, you see these tiny little needle marks going all through it. And oftentimes mahogany, when you pick the right piece of mahogany, when you turn it like this, there's a, there's a subset of reflections that happen, happen in it, right? What they call figure. And it, it is almost like a, it's almost like a kaleidoscope, right? So mahogany, that's what it looks like. It looks like that on any guitar built of mahogany. And mahogany's sound quality is dark, but not muddy, and higher treble, more treble coming out of it than a, another, any other wood, or another wood than mahogany. And a lot of projection. So there's fairly bright, and... Nice fat bottom end with a high end kind of a ring on it. Man, oh man. This thing is deadly. I love mahogany guitars because of the brightness. <laughs> so there's the mahogany and so then we take a look at this guitar this is rosewood this is rosewood I know it's rosewood because it's very dark overall and the grain in the in it is thick and dark and that, that's what almost all all rosewood looks like now you can have different kinds of rosewood East Indian Brazilian uh, whatnot all sorts of things like that but rosewood is generally the same look. The type of rosewood that's actually legal to use, it's not part of any moratorium or protection uh, action by the government. This is the type of rosewood you're gonna see. This dark chocolate with a black grain in it. And rosewood is the most highly coveted wood for guitars because it's so 
dark sounding. It's very rich sounding, and it's very hard. It's harder than mahogany, which means it it rejects vibration better than anything, so it pushes the air around and pushes the sound out of the hole harder and faster than another type of wood. So it's very rigid, hard, and it ages well. It doesn't tend to shrink a lot or expand a lot. Like I mentioned, you can see here earlier will will contract and expand like a balloon if it's not properly aged. This stuff doesn't move. It's almost in, unheard of to see a guitar, unless it's 80 or 90 years old, have a, have a crack in rosewood because it's so strong. It's such a strong wood. And this guitar here is, uh, is an HG56. This is a Heritage Series, Heritage Goose, uh, 12 fret. Um, I guess they're, this is a triple O. So, triple O body, and because it's, and it's because it's made of rosewood. Again, you have all this projection. Huge bottom end. types of wood you're going to find in most guitars and then the other thing you're going to find is maple and maple's really really obvious because it is usually blonde bright blonde and it'll have a flame pattern in it you can actually see the grain of maple really easily so a guitar that sort of has a white back and sides usually is maple and it can be stained other colors, but you can tell it immediately because it has a horizontal uh, grain in it that looks just like a like waves on the ocean. And so it's easy to tell maple. And uh, then there's different kinds of maple. There's a flame maple that has the waves, and then there's a bird's eye maple, which literally looks like little circles with dots in the middle of them, like pupils that are all over the all over all through it as a figure. And that's what makes wood valuable, is how intense the figure is in it and how well it's been uh, aged and treated or kiln dried or stored uh, or what, how old, it, how long it's been since it was harvested from the tree. So th there's, a, there's a million things that go into building a guitar. It's ridiculous how much has to be done. That goes into one instrument. The amount of work and knowledge and labor is stupid. Um, so let's see. Let's go to. Oh, geez, time's flying. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's Cam again. Has to have. Yes, and tuna melts aren't free. Thanks, Cam. Oh, Joshua McGrath. Thanks, buddy. Uh, take an OM. Blue guys are coming to neck plus. Okay, we have a, we got a super chat from uh, Joshua McGrath, and uh, so he he loves the new album. I don't know which one you mean, but thanks anyway. Uh, wonder if you could take a bluegrass OM for a span and comment on neck profile playability versus more traditional OMs. Um, okay. Um, so, do we have one of those? Cool. We got to actually have a bluegrass uh, bluegrass OM here. Glenn is searching for it. There we go. In the deeps. So this is an amazing thing as well. The fact that uh, that Robin builds guitars that that's okay. Yep. That Robin builds OM body guitars, right? See, bluegrass guitars are, have been traditionally dreadnoughts for since time immemorial, right? But Robin can build an OM body with the bluegrass shifted bracing in it that will deliver every bit of tone and volume that a dreadnought body does. When you 
see the level of confidence I have in these instruments. This thing just came out of the case, never been tuned yet. And I knew what it was going to sound like. You just tear a banjo player's head off with this. And same thing, this is the BG51, rosewood back and sides, OM body, but braced as a bluegrass instrument. And this thing is just killer. And this is the magic of Robin, right? He can do, I've never seen an OM guitar in my entire life that could fit in a bluegrass band, but every one of these does. And I know lots of bluegrass players that are actually switching to this body because it's so much more comfortable. And you ask about neck profile, the neck profile on these OMs is just to die for. It's just like butter. There's nowhere on this neck that it feels uncomfortable or digs into your hand at all. Like when you're down below the fifth fret, and it feels wide, and, and it fills your hand in a very kind of satisfying way that you don't feel like you're, there's any edges against you or any, like you're stretching for anything. It's just, everything's right there under your hand. And that's one of the reasons I love these necks so much. There's lots of room to work for some reason. Just a monster guitar. That's a nice one. <laughs> you were hot. That's it? off to Alberta Monday. That's good, that's all resold to Alberta. Yeah. There you go, perfect. Well, that's, some, that's one hell of a guitar. Um, so, you have, a, you have another super chat question. Oh, another super chat. Uh, 12th fret versus 14th fret. Well, it's funny you should ask that. I'm just going to do one more Boucher because I want to, I want to tell you about our other surprise happy guest here now. Um, I, all my life, wanted to have a signature model guitar built by a builder that that meant something, you know? And when Robin said he was gonna launch a JP Cormier signature model, I nearly fell out. And then when he told me, I'll build you anything you want, I immediately said, well, I want a triple O body, but it has to have a cutaway. And he said, you realize that, that traditionally, that's been virtually impossible to, to to do such a small body with a cutaway and still retain volume, tone. And I looked at him and said, well, you can, anybody can do what you can. So that's what he did. This is the JP Cormier signature model Boucher. It has a torified Adirondack top with a cutaway that clears at the 15th fret. Rosewood back and sides. Uh, bound in Bound in Koa? Koa? Maybe Koa, I think. And uh, slotted headstock. And this guitar is... I've not played this one yet, I've only, but I've played four of these so far, and every single one of them sounds like mine, number one. Identical. So let's see how this one does. Identical. just ridiculous. Ridiculous. I think Glenn has sold more of these than any other dealer on the planet so far. Her. And uh, so that is my choice. You want to know my choice? The 
12 and 14 fret. This scale, especially in Robin's guitars, there's something supernatural about it. And I have an, another one of his, uh, I have another of his triple O guitars without the cutaway. So I was sacrificing these frets up here in my live show, but I would do it because I couldn't keep my hands off that guitar. I was literally staying away from certain tunes because I couldn't get up here easily. And I sacrificed those tunes so I could play that guitar. So when he offered to build my signature, this is what I chose. And, and with the cutaway so I could get up at these frets again. And buddy, did he ever just blow the hell out of that right out of the park a million miles. And uh, they're just some of the best guitars I've ever played. This is the fifth one that I've played. And every single one of them is identical to mine. In every way. Tone, playability, looks. Just stupid. Unbelievable, Robin. I hope you're watching this. You know, you don't have time to do to watch a lot of things like this, but I'm telling you, this it's nice to see all these bouches in one place. So that was the SMJP 56 right there. And uh, so now I want to just do a quick I have to do this because we you all know me and I've been for years telling people if you know if you can't spend what are we talking? 71 something uh, like that? Goes for about 63. Well, 63 here? 79, yeah. Yeah, so that's a $6,300 guitar. And it's worth every penny. But if you can't afford that and you want to play something that I play or that I like, I've always wanted to be able to tell you this is what you should buy. And a lot of times you, you know, kind of pick stuff and, and you tell people to buy it and but you're not sure if it's going to hold together, or stay together, or whatever. And some of the some of the stuff that's cheaper is literally their disposable guitars, right? And but recently, there's been a company come back from the the history, the annals of history of the guitar. A company called Recording King, and some fellows out in San Francisco got real clever, and they resurrected this catalog mail order catalog guitar company that was really busy in the 30s and 40s. They were sold by Montgomery Ward and up here in Canada by people like Sears and Roebuck and Woolworths and all this different all these different catalog companies. And the actual the actual original recording king guitars that that survive until now, they're worth thousands of dollars. People collect them cuz and they stayed together. That's the amazing thing about it even back then 80 years ago. They built these $20 guitars and $30 guitars in the catalog, and those they're still around, and people are playing them. I saw, I saw Molly Tuttle playing one on YouTube yesterday from the 30s, and it was incredible. It sounded amazing. So these fine fellows said, let's resurrect this company, and they did. And they, they designed the guitars out in San Francisco. They sent the plans away to the big luthier shops in China, had the guitars built, sent back to San Francisco, Knoxville, I think there's another shop somewhere in the U.S., and do the final fit and finish, pickup install, final quality control, all that stuff. And these guitars are coming out of the case pretty damn impressive. And I'm telling you, this is the bottom of the line over here, which is really surprising. This, this is actually a copy. This is the actual Recording King style guitar. That was sold in the 30s. And this is, a, I believe, a solid top. I think it's a solid top on this one. Uh, Sitka, I, I would imagine. I can't remember for sure, boy, sorry. And uh, But, of course, the back and the sides are laminate. But this comes also installed. A pickup. A Fishman Precis on board. And listen to the sound of this instrument.
retro. And so it just sounds old as hell. And I love that. I love the old vintage instruments. I can't afford them. You can't afford to pay. Some of these vintage guitars go for like 50 grand. And they, they sound about like this, right? Unless you're going for like old Gibbons and old Martins and stuff like that. But some of these older vintage guitars that they want for that kind of sound, that old rugged Delta Blues, maybe kind of just that old sound that you can't get out of anything else except that type of antique instrument, this guitar sells for $395. That's ridiculous. And it's going to stay together. You look at this thing and the fit and finish on it is beautiful. There's no seams in it. There's no glue anywhere. It's just really, really well made with a great neck. And the materials are fine. There's nothing wrong with the, this guitar at, in the least. I actually love these things. Uh, they got great necks on them. They're retro right down to the point where there's a, there's a model below this one where the fret markers are ornate and they're painted on just like the original recorded kings were they're like a stenciled fret marker and, and they look so cool and uh so that's that one then we got this is out of their series called the dirty 30 so this is the r the r uh R -O -R -R -O -S 9 from the dirty 30 series and another one of the dirty 30s here is this one which is a, an om body and it's mahogany Nice matte finished mahogany, laminate, solid top, and uh, Fishman pickup on board. Again, they sound the same. Like they sound, they both have that nice old buckety Delta Blues. And you can do anything with them. You can play anything on this if you wanted to. So they also have done some pretty incredible stuff outside this line they've paid tribute to martin of course they, you always have to if you're going to be a guitar builder martin invented the dreadnought invented most of the body styles we deal with all the time so they've built these guitars here as well this is a mahogany om it's beautiful wood bound in tortoise Onboard pickup, solid top. And what's the price on this one, Glenn? Uh, six forty nine. Six forty nine for this. For that kind of money, it's going to stay together. It's you're going to get a lot of lot of pleasure out of that if you're just if you're starting out. This is a guitar that take you can keep this the rest of your life. It's that type of guitar, and it'll age well and it's going to fall apart. And it's just well made and sounds really nice. So then there's they went a step further even than that, and. They built a super high-end line. Super high-end. Watch this. So, again, tribute to the Martin. This is their top of the line. This is an OM body, the RO328. This guitar is 100% solid with an Adirondack top. Beautiful bleeding heart tortoise pick guard on it. It looks like the real thing. It really does, too. It's stunning. Rosewood back and sides. Bound in full mammoth, just like a Martin is. Probably the same exact material. It looks like the same to me. And just incredibly well built for $9.95 for this guitar. All solid with an Adirondack top.
hard pressed to find a guitar that sounds like that for 900 bucks. <laughs> That's really something. It's, it's scary. The, the quality of it for that kind of price. And I'll tell you, I actually brought my own recording king because Glenn sold his immediately upon getting it because it's such a tremendous instrument for the money. I brought my dreadnought version of that guitar. So this is their, this is their uh, 328 dreadnought. This is my own one I brought from home. The dreadnought version. The RD 328. Same thing. Beautiful, all solid rosewood. Mahogany neck. Adirondack top. And man, this, this thing just sings. <laughs> tune from the driving the car but so if you can't afford if you want to save your money for one of these guitars which I would if you if you're serious about playing guitar and you want a lifetime instrument you're gonna actually leave to your kids and your grandkids that's gonna be it you're not really gonna find a much be better value for your money than that but they're high and we know they are there's no question that they're worth it and you need to have something really cool that you can play while you're saving your pennies. You're not going to beat that, I'm telling you. That's a, a lot of guitar for a thousand dollars, I'm telling you. And uh, it'll keep you going, and when you have your money saved for that, or you maybe you get a custom Boucher made, which is not really that much worse to get, then you get two great guitars. You can leave, you know, you can, this can play around the house, you can use the Boucher for it. You get two guitars out of the deal. So. This is not one, you're not going to be chucking this in the garbage once you, once you get your dream instrument, right? This will stay with you. This is a guitar that will stay with you. So, th that's the Recording Kings, and, and Glenn, Glenn's, uh, well, Glenn sells every damn thing he brought, it's just, everything just disappeared as soon as it comes in here. I'm surprised that I'm not gone yet. And, uh, so, um, let's see here. Chat is on. Are we still on? Are we good? Yeah, sure enough. Chat's been disconnected for some reason. They're trying to re, re, uh, re reconnect. The computer might be off. That's true, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's okay. Because we're, we're right near the end here. Oh, yeah, we need this for the uh, answer. I should be able to see it on here. Okay. Yeah, we're still on GoFell. There we go. Okay, so time for the trivia question and the giveaway. And I want you to meet my friend. This guy, I've been knowing this guy since the mid-90s. When he called me one day and he said, he called me out of the blue and he said, JP, you don't really know me that well. We'd met at the ECMAs. He had a band with his brother called the Kid Brothers. It was a, child's, a children's act and they were really well loved. And they won East Coast Music Awards and made records and all that stuff. And Beloved entertainer. And he called me one day and said, I got a music shop and I want you to see these guitars I just got in. And I thought to myself, oh boy, here we go. What's, what could this be? Came down and he had Lakewoods. One of these bad boys. Made in Germany. And they're a brilliant guitar. And we actually helped design a couple Lakewoods. Uh, the versions of which are still sold today by them. And, uh, I used them for quite a while, and then I, Matt Anderson took over from me. He started using them, and uh, he's been using them ever since. And they're brilliant guitars, and they get, a, they get a tremendous following all over the world. So, hopefully we're still up. Are we, uh, what's it look like in there? Not really sure. Okay. We're going to keep going anyway. <laughs> still counting up. 
is the are you getting any comments on the phone? No. Nope. Uh oh. Somebody send us a comment to let us know we're alive here. Anybody? Can you still see on the computer? Pardon me? Oh, it's off. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. I wish we I wish we knew. There's no internet on the computer. Oh, there's no internet at all. Oh, God. Maybe something's gone down. We're probably not on. It's still counting up the minutes. Because we're still connected to your system, but there's no internet. Maybe the internet said there's supposed to be a thunderstorm tonight. That's weird. Yeah. It might still be. Hi. It might still post. They can answer Hi. it later. <laughs> Maybe we'll answer this one on uh, Facebook. Yeah. Answer the, because they can watch it when it comes up. Will this go up? Will this post up? I think so. We'll give it a go. I'll we'll give it a shot. Okay. Anyhow, this is my man. Then go tell. Right on. Good stuff. Great having you here tonight. Oh, it's been a lot of fun. For sure. And uh, Glenn's been super good to me for for twenty years. He's got guitars in for me. He's repaired stuff for me. He's always been there. Every time I needed something and couldn't find it, he's found it. And uh, so with Lakewood and and now Boucher, yeah. this is the number one dealer in the world. He's sold more Bouchers than any other dealer. And now in Recording King, now people are coming to see these guitars, which is, they're, they're wicked oh, budget the guitar, aren't oh, they? Oh, they certainly are. It's yeah, incredible. Sure. So... We've been, this is the man who's been sponsoring our giveaways every week. And uh, I'm sure you know, some of you know, because you want to come down here and see him. So tonight, we're gonna, our giveaway is going to be really cool. And uh, it has not been lost on us that we might not actually be online right now. So Jim Hanlon texted and said it's working. Is it working? Great. Okay, good, good. <laughs> Thank God for that. Because we're a little Hi, worried Jim, there. Thanks. Hey, Jim, thanks, buddy. <laughs> so tonight, we have a special, as always... Because Glenn's always been really super good to us sponsoring this show. So the first thing we're doing is what we've been doing for a while. That J.P. Cormier signature model right here. This guitar, $500 off to get this guitar for anyone, anywhere in the world. He will ship it to you with a $500 off. Also... Every other Boucher in the store until the end of the month, whoever wins this is going to get $250 off of one of these Bouchers. So that's the, that's the first thing you win if you get this trivia question right. And then the second thing you win if you get this question right is $50. Is that right? Yep. Off, off of here. any recording king. Yep. So with guitars that are only eight dollars $900, it's a pretty good deal. And then, of course, you also get... These a special shout out to Levy straps, the G and G custom leather strap from Levy's, free of charge. Real string one direction. Won't <laughs> spin. And today we usually do elixirs, but I tried these and I think they're pretty cool. These are the Martin Authentic, uh, super la long lasting coated string. I think these are the yeah, ones, right? Yeah. They're pretty cool. So that's so you get the string strap, the winder. $50 off a of Recording King or $250 off of Boucher. And this prize, well, you have until the end of the month to, you know, buy one of the guitars. or But you'll get this regardless when you come down and see Glenn. So how are they going to answer this question? Well, I'm assuming that they're going to, they can still, they can't talk to us? I haven't seen a single message come up. Hmm. Let me look at the computer one more time. So they can put the answers in and maybe we can read them later? It'll just be, I'll tell you what we'll have to do. We can't see you anymore for some reason. So the first person we, when we go back and watch this and look at the comments, the first person we see with the right answer will win. So r run your comments through YouTube here. The first person we see in the list wins the package. Good. good. Sounds good. Right on. Here's the question. You all know that my favorite guitar player of all time was Chet Atkins. Name the town where Chet Atkins was born. Someone probably already has it, but we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. We'll find it out. <laughs> but sh put it in there, because <laughs> it's going to show up when, we, when this uploads to YouTube, and we can look at the comments, it'll be there, in the order you guys put it up. That's the question. Who 
Uh, I mean, where was Chet Atkins <laughs> born? What town was Chet Atkins born in? And so who, we'll go. We'll find your right answer, and then we'll uh, contact you, and you'll contact Glenn. You yep. come pick up your prize, and you have until the end of the month to, to spend a fifty dollar coupon on Recording King, or a two hundred and fifty dollar coupon on a Boucher, and anyone who wants the J.P. Cormier signature model at any time. Anywhere on the planet can get a five hundred dollar coupon from this man right here. Lots of stock and uh, yes, yeah, there's sure. tons of guitar. Let's just take a look. Let's take a look around the store because Glenn literally carries everything. He has cases. He has sound equipment. Nice sound equipment, by the way, too. All your drum gear, cymbals, sticks, perk, uh, a bunch of other makes. There's there's Sigmas and Courts and Martins. And all sorts of things, the electrics, acoustics. He has a rack on the wall over there of some very nice violins. There's used gear. He trades. He bargains. He barters. <laughs> Dulcimers, <laughs> mandolins, like everything's in here. Amplifiers. All your uh, post, uh, all your post-install pickup gears here. Picks, microphones. What's this character's name? Carlos. Yeah. Carlos. Yeah, this is a really cool shop. I love coming in here. It's always been a blast, and uh, you'll enjoy this place. If it doesn't matter what level you're at, there's an instrument in here for you. There's something in here that you'll like, no matter whether you're a pro player or just beginning or whatever. And you, you do repairs and stuff, too. Oh, sure, yeah. do, yeah. For All sure. kinds of repairs. Yeah, yeah. or stop in just to chat. Yep, yeah, for sure. Play a tune or two. So... That'll bring us to the end, and sorry, sorry, the internet got weird there, but we're, there's a storm coming. They said on the way down here. I think maybe we had a could have been an issue, but anyhow, we'll see you next week. And if you enjoy this, feel free to hit our tip jar, which is in the description below. Hit subscribe, and we're launching our new paid membership to the channel soon, which is going to be really cool. Gives you a whole bunch of extra perks on the side that nobody else gets. If you want to join. And again, Glenn, right thank on. you so well, much. Thanks for coming. Enjoyed it. Thank Good you stuff. so much. Right on. And just a, this has been a blast. We'll have to do this oh, oh, for know, sure. for again. We have to do this again for sure. And uh, yeah, special hello to Boucher, Levy Straps, Recording King. Thank you very much. And there you go. There's another episode of String Theory for you. And just remember, music's only as hard as you make it. And if you're a guitar player, the guy who has the most when he dies wins. <laughs> See you next week. Right on.